It's now my pleasure to welcome to the stage the only chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series driver to receive a good night of sleep this week, and that's uh, Jimmy Johnson, driver of the number 48 Lowe Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Jimmy, uh, you, you got the win last week at Charlotte. You punched your ticket into the round of eight in the chase. Uh, does that now, that seventh championship, does that seem uh, a more realistic possibility to you now? Yeah, it's definitely more realistic because we're alive and transferring to the, the round of eight. Um, there's still so much racing between now and then. Um, you know, we've had some consistent runs, so definitely building confidence in that. Uh, the victory is a, is a huge boost. There's, there's no way around that for myself, um, my crew members, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. So uh, we're, we're definitely building momentum at the, at the right time. It's probably later than we would have liked, but uh, at least it's going in the right direction. And uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. We, we clearly are in that round of eight. But, um, man, this chase, I think some felt like it got off to a calm start. And then last weekend with half the chasers having issues in the, in the, in the race, I think it just shows anything can happen. And uh, the guys that are living it you know, day in and day out, we don't take it for granted. And I'm certainly not taking it for granted. And don't think that I'm in a layup situation for Homestead by, by any stretch. So uh, we need to make sure we are part of that final four. And there's a lot of work between now and then. OK, we'll open the floor up for questions. If you have questions, we'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Kenny and go to Nick. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. Jimmy, since they've started this elimination style format, I think we've had two instances of guys winning multiple races in a round. Joey won all three in the second round last year. Uh, Martin won two or three in the first round this year. I would think that if you win the first race in a round, then you're more apt to win again in that round because you have nothing to lose. You can gamble if you need to. You can go for it. But that doesn't seem like that's been the case. Is that, is that not the approach? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the approach. But you, you just can't take for granted how difficult it is to win in our sport. Um, you know, secondly, I think you know, there are certain tracks that fit certain companies and certain styles that drivers might have or crew chief might have. So um, you know, that, I think that's a big player as well. You know, in this, this elimination round, you could look at a team that has fast mile and a half cars and think that you know, they're, they're a favorite for the first two. But Talladega, you have no clue what's going to happen there. So uh, then in the final um, or the next round, you, know, you have a short track and some big tracks. So I, it's just it's just tough. Um, I, I think it's real hard to, to favor or uh, pick a favorite um, f for somebody that could win all three or, or win multiple times. I think we're going to take them as they come. If we have troubles early in either of them, it'll be easy to, to just brush it off and say, hey, we're locked in. Uh, we'll move on. But ideally, I, I want to keep the pressure on our team. Um, I want us to have more exposure to race winning pressure, championship pressure. Uh, I feel that makes everybody stronger on the race team. Um, and, and there's trophies to go get. And I, I want more trophies this year, without a doubt. So we're, we're showing up with the normal mindset. I, I, I think it would be smart for us to not change anything and take the pressure off of ourselves. Um, you, you, you've got to be at 10 tenths for these final races. We'll go to Nick and then to Nate. Nick Bromberg, Yahoo Sports. I've, I'm assuming you have an inkling you know, heading into the chase, hey, we're going to have a little performance bump coming in. But through the first four races, you and Chase leading a bunch of laps, showing the speed, has it been a little surprising to you, saying, oh, wow, we really are fast. This is, this is really good heading to the last six. I wouldn't say surprising. You know, it's tough because we, we try to show our optimism through interviews and social posts that we might make. And I think if you look back over the course of the, the last few months, you know, our comments have all been directionally optimistic and, and been building speed. And then to not close um, on a couple events that we let a lot of laps at uh, the start of the chase, uh, I think that finally showed everybody that we weren't just BSing them and that we really did have the speed. To us, it was frustrating that we didn't close and we didn't execute like we needed to. And then Charlotte, we, we did so. Um, so for the 48 team, uh, that's kind of been the progression and the way things have gone. And uh, it was real nice to have a clean, solid race in, in Charlotte and get the win. We'll go next to Nate, then to Lee, and then to Brandt. 
Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, I have two, real quick, just to follow up on Kenny's question, Jimmy. You haven't really been in this position before where you're guaranteed advancement and can essentially help your teammates the next two races. W will you be Chase's wingman at Talladega, or are there things you can do to help him a little bit here even that, that might get him to the next round? Yeah, I think from an on-track standpoint, Talladega is about the only place I could help him and, and could work with him. Um, you know, we, we, we want to win the race here and do all that we can. And if we can, of course, we want the 24 to. Um, and they, they need to have a great day. Um, you know, but if there's a, a duel at the end of the race between us and the 24, I'm here to win the race. I mean, that, and that's, that's, I think Chase and Allen, I know for a fact Chase and Allen would expect us to do that. Um, so there, there's not much we can do here other than the prep that we've, uh, we've had leading into this week and how awesome our teams have been working together and the, the ground we have covered in a short period of time. So that, that element is still there, still going on. Um, we've all been leaning on each other tremendously. So, so that will all still be there. But come race time, we still have to race. And in Talladega, Tal Talladega is probably the only place I can help them. And secondly, uh, NASCAR distributed 2017 proposed rules, probably be official uh, after the season finale. Uh, have you had a chance to look at them? And I guess two things that I'm, at, I'm curious about, the spoiler reduction and biometrics for the drivers. I was wondering if you had any reaction to, to both of those. Yeah, you know, we're all um, wanting slower center of corner speeds. We all feel that that will put on a better race. Um, the, the slower the center of corner speed is, the more off-throttle time we create, the more opportunities there are to pass, the more opportunities there are to make mistakes, um, the more opportunities you have to work on the handling of your race car. So directionally, that's the way the sport's going. I think the smaller spoiler is going to help us. Uh, we saw a nice improvement you know, across all matrices with uh, the, the 16 package and 17 is another step of that. I'll be here Monday testing the 17 package and get a real good feel for it. And then biometrics, I think that's it's cool to show, and it's another talking point. Um, and I think you know, the the broadcast booth could, uh, and then how it's integrated into maybe the NASCAR app and things could be could be really cool and something else for the fans to see. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. Um, was there an awkward feeling for a six-time champion? Did you at any point feel irrelevant when you were knocked out of the chase so early? Uh, and not be there with the best of the best competing more so for the title than, you know, just every week competing for the race itself? No, I didn't feel irrelevant. I mean, you know, disappointed, um, especially last year, the way, the way that it happened. But I, I didn't feel like I was, you know, if we ran well, we got the attention we deserved. It was unfortunate we didn't have a chance to win the championship, but... Um, or have, have a shot at the championship, but I didn't feel like I've, I think I've heard second class citizen used before. I, I didn't feel any of that took place. I mean, if you still go out there and run well and run up front, you're going to get all, all the you know, exposure that you and your team need and deserve. But um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel that way. And, and secondly, losing Storthaus Racing next year, do you think Hendrick Motorsports needs to actively recruit? another organization of that caliber to give you the extra data and things, or do you think that Hendrick is strong enough on its own to persevere? You know, that, that environment's tricky. Um, just to be selfishly speaking of Hendrick Motorsports, you know, the, the Stuart Haas relationship, we, we didn't get their data. We didn't share their data. They, they had ours. So it was a fantastic situation for them. They had our best stuff and then they have a huge engineering staff and they can take Hendrick's best equipment and refine it and make it better. Um, I think the Gibbs group's going to be experiencing and has been experiencing that with the Furniture Row side. Um, you know, when before Rodney Childers and Kevin Harvick were at Stuart Haas, worked pretty good for us. We had a bunch of income for the company, didn't have to worry about racing for wins or championships against the Stuart Haas equipment. Um, but those guys changed the game and you bring Kurt Busch and Tony himself and all that it all that's there and you, know, you start questioning the relationship and if it really is the right thing um, You know, especially with us not sharing the, the data I mean they, there were some some things going on that were helpful and data was moving around a little bit But they really had all the rights to our stuff. We didn't we didn't have the rights to theirs um, So it, it's tricky if Mr. Hendrick can raise the money to not have that relationship, I think for us, selfishly, it's better not to, 
we, we would always like to have um, some people running our engines and, and trying to do durability stuff on, on new, pro, new motors that are coming out. Um, so I would imagine having a couple of cars out there, we'll always have that. But to, you know, a team at that high a caliber, again, I, I believe we'd look really hard before we made that decision again. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go up front the Brant and then to the back the Randy. Brant James, USA Today Sports. Even considering you and your team had had great success before this version of the chase and some, some huge runs in, in the fall, did this version require some sort of rethink on how you approach weekends and segments and just a different way to maybe break it down and digest it differently? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's different. And I mean, every year, it's only been three, but every situation has been different for me. So I've, I've invested a lot of time in thinking, which is hard for me to do, as those of you that know me well. I'm not very good at thinking. Um, and it's all been wasted energy because you have no clue what's going to happen. And, you know, you worry about yourself, but then if others have trouble, when they have trouble, it's, it is chaos to be in to once when the five, the first round starts when there's 16 sure you worry about points but as each round goes by um you know you one mistake and i'm so glad i'm not one of the teams that had trouble at charlotte um you know it's just tough and, and there is no clear-cut path to, to to be one of the final four at homestead okay we'll go next to randy jimmy uh, randy Kovic, kansas city star how are you Speaking of Stuart Haas, uh, this is Tony Stewart's farewell hero. He's won twice, and uh, just as a fellow former champ, a fellow champion, uh, just just frame what Tony's meant to this sport, to this series, as a competitor, as a confrontational <laughs> character as well. Just kind of write for me Tony's epitaph. He's kept it exciting. Doesn't matter who you are. Um, you know, the competitor on track is fierce, extremely talented. Um, you know, I look at him as a guy that is like the A.J. Foyt or Pernelli Jones of our era that's raced anything and everything and has won races and championships and, and everything. Um, it, it takes such a talent to do that. I, I can't imagine between open wheel and, and NASCAR to be able to find that last tent to be a race winner what what detail goes into that and i think it speaks to his uh his skill sets um he's going to be missed i'm thankful he's going to be around i know that the motorsports in general is going to benefit um now that his focus just isn't on driving you know with all the other uh, interests he has in in racing um but he's a fierce competitor uh, an amazing friend especially when you get the helmet off of him um, you can go from wanting to kill each other on the racetrack to uh, or crash each other on the racetrack to being best of friends. And uh, I've certainly experienced that. I've been in the NASCAR trailer with him after we've run each other over. When the, after the checkered flag came out of the Daytona 500, and two days later, he's bringing me a pizza to my motorhome. So um, he's, uh, he's definitely a fierce competitor and a lot of fun to be around. Good deal. Well, Jimmy, thanks for taking the time to join us this morning. Good luck this weekend. Cool. Thank you, everybody.